Raja Kannan Gopalakrishnan. He was working as a senior architect at Engineering Design Research Center L&T Construction, India's largest construction company. He's also worked on projects ranging from institutional buildings to international airports, apartment complexes to aircraft hangars. He's also attended 3 international conferences and 2 national conferences and has also presented technical papers at the Jawaharlal Nehru University Delhi and the MSRIT Bangalore he's also won the national championship at Archimen at the India's largest architecture quiz sir kannan gopalakrishnan currently runs a design firm habitat design studio and he is also a visiting faculty at the renowned architecture schools in tamil nadu Welcome back to UGC lecture series. This is AR six five zero two, History of Architecture and Culture five. We are in unit two. We are reviewing industrialization. This is lecture number thirteen. And if you remember the previous lecture, we saw the associations that came to the industrial arts and production. We saw arts and crafts movement in Europe and in America. We saw the works of William Morris and Philip Webb. This episode will be looking at a very interesting style of architecture. which is called the art nouveau let's take a look at what art nouveau is about art nouveau is an international philosophy and style of art let me just stop there we're calling it an international philosophy and style of art we didn't call the previous art movement the arts and crafts movement as international philosophy but we're calling it an art nouveau as international philosophy why there is a reason art nouveau was one of the first styles which expressed its presence over a large number of countries i'm going to tell you why it happened in the further slides but then we'll just continue on what art nouveau is about as of now art nouveau is an international philosophy and style of art architecture and applied art especially the decorative arts that was the most popular during 1890 to 1910 a reaction to the academic art of the 19th century see another reactionary movement like i said all movements were reaction to something this style was inspired by natural forms and structures not only in flowers and plants but also in curved lines in general the english term art nouveau is derived from the french word art nouveau which is new art in french and it also has different names in different countries in different languages according to the philosophy of style like all art philosophies has art should be a way of life art and artists decided to combine all the fine arts and applied arts together even for objects that you use in everyday life like lamp shades like mirrors like furniture even for utilitarian objects people tried to incorporate fine arts with applied arts they combined it married it together and that is how art nouveau was produced i told earlier that the style has different names in different languages and the style has presence over a lot of countries which are going to appear on the screen right now austria spain czech republic denmark germany hungary italy norway poland russia sweden and in a lot of countries in a lot of languages it was called in different terms now let us take another thing which actually defines art nouveau art nouveau is called total art style not only it is an internationally acclaimed style not only the style being followed in a lot of countries and a lot of places but it is also a total style why is it a total style a total style is something which has its presence on all or almost all art forms it has fundamentally utilitarian art forms like architecture graphic art and interior design yes it has its presence over the fundamental or rather say let's say functional art forms or even in the decorative art forms like jewelry making furniture design textile design household silver and other utensil design lighting design and even in fine arts for example so this style had a presence in almost all these gamuts of art which meant that it has universal presence and that is why we call this art style as a total art style another important terminology which we should understand in art nouveau is the whiplash whiplash actually first gains its presence in the publication in pan magazine it was by herman orbris he says that whiplash is a sudden 
violent curves which generated by the crack of a whip this was the place when it became all well known during the early art nouveau period that is the early 1890s this work itself later became to be known as the whiplash not only that but also the term whiplash is frequently applied as a characteristic curve which is also being employed by a lot of art nouveau artists whiplash is nothing but the way the whip forms whip is something which you strike the way the whip forms the curves that the whip produces because the whip has a very characteristic um look in itself if you keep the whip straight it will look straight and the curves are never very sharp the curves are very general and sometimes the curves are very deep towards the end of the whip where it becomes thin so in thinner forms the curves are very strong and when it the things are used in thick lines the curves are very gentle so that is the identity of a whip and that is exactly how it was used in arts and art forms also moving along from whiplash in architecture hyperbolas parabolas and all these different kinds of figures were starting to emerge and these kinds of figures were beginning to be seen in the windows arches and doorways that became very common the decorative moldings practically grew into plant derived forms like in most design cases it sought to harmonize all the forms which are available in the nature art nouveau movement in architecture and interior design did not follow the eclectic revival style of the 19th century they did not want anything from the previous era which means the art form of the arts and crafts movement is much different from art nouveau the art form which is used in the previous styles like rococo style or the baroque style which is much different from art nouveau style they did not follow any eclectic revival style they did not say okay i'm going to take this particular style from this particular era and then i'm going to eclect it i'm going to clad it with a different style i'm going to make it look like a different thing add a new wrapper to it and present it to you i'm not going to do that in art nouveau things are going to be raw and natural forms are being are going to be expressed in its natural beauty as it should be even though some of the designers selected and worked on modernized some elements some from rococo style such as the flame or the shell but they also stayed very true to the organic form which they styled because they used these organic forms of nature such as the shell or a flame which is actually available in nature they took those as source of inspiration they expanded the appearance natural appearance of these elements they used grass they used insects seaweed and other things in their decorative form the softly melding forms of the 17th century auricular style auricular style is a style of making utensils silverware and it's a dutch art form which is also a very important uh, element which influenced art nouveau and art nouveau actually started in paris this also like i told you in the previous episodes a lot of these art forms travel from another country or another place because after the advent of modern technology machinery in the industrial revolution the world became a very very small place people were able to move faster people were able to move farther and while moving they also bring their own along with them their own heritage their own art form and their own language so people started mixing languages people started mixing art forms and things started to derive out of things that did not exist in their particular region which could have been existing in some other region also so art nouveau was a culmination of all these things together the art nouveau artists did not show any hesitation in using the new materials that were invented from machines as in opposition to the arts and crafts movement those people shunned the use of machines and machine made products but whereas art nouveau people did not do that they said okay i am going to use all the materials that were produced by machines but then i'm going to also add my own value to it which will make it all the more precious to me i'm not going to say no to machine made products but then i'm not going to use them as such also i'm going to add my own value to it and then sell it or and then use it so that was a speciality about art nouveau movement they did not completely shun the materials that were produced by machines they embraced them instead for sculpture the main materials that they used were glass and wrought iron 
So, which means iron was an industrial material. Sculpting iron was very difficult at the point of time without the advent of modern machinery. So, if you used modern machinery and modern materials, your own imagination also gets poured into that and you get wonderful products in as a result. Art Nouveau architecture made use of a lot of technological innovations, especially iron and large irregularly shaped glass pieces for architecture. Let us take a look at some of the key proponents of this Art Nouveau movement. We'll look at a few artists first and then let's move on to a few architects in the later part of this list. Some of the artists who were really fixated on this particular style and who really contributed to the development of the style was were Alphonse Musha, Gustav Klimt, Jean Troup, René Lalique, Louis Comfort Tiffany. And some of the architects who practiced for a brief period of time or practiced Art Nouveau for the entire career were Otto Wagner, Henry Van der Velde, Charles René McIntosh, Antonio Gaudi, Hector Goimar, Victor Horta, Peter Behrens, Joseph Hoffman, Eliel Saarinen and Louis Sullivan. These are the famous names. Of course, there are a lot of other people who also followed Art Nouveau movement in their own styles, in their own ways. But due to paucity of time and space, we could only list a few people here. I was telling that Art Nouveau was a total art movement, right? By total art movement, it means that the art movement kind of embraced different varieties of art. So let us take a look at some of the products which were designed in art movement. Take a look at the lampshades, was, jugs, urns and other products that were designed during the Art Nouveau period. You can clearly see the gentle curves, you can clearly see the use of animal motifs and plant motifs irregular but smooth curves not only in the form but also in the decor inside the form taking inspiration from nature and natural materials even the colors are from nature these are some of the designs that were produced in the field of jewelry design and accessory design brushes sculptures another art Again, take a look at how they had inspired, they have been inspired from animal forms. This is a dragon fly. Uh, the form of an insect is so clearly expressed. A few artists also worked on making graphic designs. They produced postcards, they produced um, graphic letterheads, they produced envelopes, they also made paintings illustrations for magazines, books and other publications. So, Alphonse Musha was one of the pioneers of Art Nouveau art and uh, he made these paintings. These paintings have a touch of Roman antiquity in them, but look at the surroundings, look at the environment in which these ladies are sitting. So, the environment is clearly not Roman even their accessories and even the way, even their expressions are clearly not antiquity art. Even though the inspiration came from antiquity, the Roman, ancient Roman art, the final art form is clearly Art Nouveau. Peacock, peacock moldings. Thin lines have sharper curve and thick lines have a wider curve. Whiplash. This is more interesting. Take a look at some of the furniture that were designed during the Art Nouveau period. The bold form, curves, everything in this room is Art Nouveau furniture. Even the chandelier, even the corners on the roof, the chairs. Let's come back to Art Nouveau architecture. Art Nouveau architecture was primarily expressed through decoration. Buildings were covered with ornament and with curving forms, like I earlier mentioned, majority often based on flowers, plants, animals, butterflies, peacocks, swans, irises. One of the main characters of Art Nouveau is the use of asymmetrical facade 
again rococo style also had asymmetrical facade and asymmetrical designs in their art form but what differentiated art nouveau from rococo was the grace which they added art nouveau had a grace whereas rococo had bourgeois often decorated with polychrome ceramic tiles were the facades of art nouveau buildings the most important thing about decoration is they suggested movement there was no distinction between the structure and the ornament the structure and the ornament were all in one grand unison they often suggested movement again gentle curves floral motifs vibrant colors of nature with plush designs on the left hand side is a building which is famously known as the tassel hotel this was designed by the famed architect victor hota if you take a look at the interiors of this hotel you'll realize that it's a perfect art nouveau building the exterior looks like a mix of elements it has art nouveau elements yes and the positioning windows and other things looks a little like neo classical but one should clearly note the distinction which they had made through accentuating the entrance and look at the detail here in the windows where the size of the window kept reducing at each level in neo classical architecture this was a sacrilege that could not happen in neo classical architecture if there was a window here there needs to be a window here of the same size it could be a semicircular arch or it could be a segmental arch yes but if there is a window of certain size the same size should have been repeated over here but look at how the size of the window is reducing as height goes up this is the interior of the tassel hotel everything in this hotel is art nouveau right from column capitals to iron columns railings even the steps of the staircases the decor on the walls decor panels railings on the side on top lamps floor everything about this picture is art nouveau in architecture the the style first made its appearance in this tassel hotel and there was another hotel called hotel solway which victor hota designed 6 years after this tassel hotel inspired a lot of architects at that particular point of time to an extent that another architect hector goimart went to the tassel hotel saw the hotel got inspired and used similar kind of architecture in his first major work which is the castle branger in castle branger this new architect this hector goimart worked so beautifully that he received a commission to design the entrances of all new paris metro stations the paris metro stations were underground metro station you you have to get down to the underground and take a metro station so the entrances need to be emphasized above the ground so all these entrance stations were given as a commission to hector goimart but unfortunately after the war a lot of these metro stations were destroyed only a very few of these places still remain and one of them is still existing in an intact condition if you're wondering what the castle branger looked like this is the entrance of castle branger let us take a look at the scenario what happened in paris right before this art nouveau thing came this was the time period of early 1890s early 18, 1892 1893 uh, in those time periods there were very strict architectural rules and regulations in paris which is imposed by the city prefect under the kingdom under the leadership of napoleon the 3 windows were restricted the use of decor in the facade was restricted a lot of things were restricted there were so many restrictions and regulations the rules were very very strict finally in 1903 bow windows were finally allowed so when things started moving towards their favor art nouveau architects took to the extreme opposite end of the spectrum and they designed buildings which were essentially huge works of sculpture they didn't design architecture they looked more like huge works of sculpture completely covered with decoration floral motifs and other forms of decor this kind of architectural style spread slowly from france to belgium from belgium to uh, germany switzerland italy spain and to the rest of the europe 
It took different names and different character in each of the countries. On the right hand side, you see is an interior of Art Nouveau by a German architect. And on the left hand side, you see one of the famous works by one of the famous architects in Spain. We will study in detail about this architect and his works in the further episodes. Just take a look at how different Art Nouveau could be in different time periods and in different countries by different architects. Sharp contrast of the formality of language in German Art Nouveau with the organic architecture in Spain. Now it's time for us to take a look at the primary features of Art Nouveau buildings. Buildings primarily had asymmetrical shapes, we already discussed that. The extensive use of arches and curved forms. Arches why? Because arches were the only form of entrances which used a curve. They couldn't use a flat doorway because they detested flat forms, they wanted curve forms everywhere. So arch was the only thing which was available for them to use a curve even in the entrance doorway. So they used extensive arches, curved glass again, um, not flat glass like they used to use in the cathedrals before, curved glass, uh, curving plant-like embellishments, mosaic stained glass, and yes, the important thing which is a grand feature in Art Nouveau buildings are the Japanese motifs. Like I mentioned earlier, people could travel farther at relative ease now, thanks to all the modern modes of transport after industrial revolution. People traveled to far, people traveled wide, they went all the way to Japan, learnt some stuff over there, came back, they even used Japanese motives and Japanese styling in their buildings. Coming to the name Art Nouveau, it's actually new art in French, but how did this name actually come into existence? Well, let's just say that there was this famous art gallery which was in Paris and the art gallery was called Maison de l'Art Nouveau and that is the springing point of the name Art Nouveau. Here is a building in um, Russia, an interior of Art Nouveau in Russia. Like I was telling, Different countries took different ways in which they can express this art form and this is how they expressed in Russia. Here again, you can take a look at use of iron in Art Nouveau, animal forms and column bases and column capitals. Even the arch is actually not, a, not technically an arch and they've made it look like an arch by means of external treatment. The particularly Notable feature is the asymmetry in design in this gate. Here on the right hand side is a look at one of the top end furniture which was designed for again for the rich echelon and um, one of the cities in Paris this particular designs were developed. There was a huge workshop for this kind of works and around the workshop, there were a lot of Art Nouveau buildings that were generated just to showcase the works that were done by this workshop. Art Nouveau was an eventuality which had to happen because all over Europe, there were a need for liberating and there was a need for change of direction because two centuries of industrial revolution got people into boring routine habits and they got into this mechanized life. They desperately needed art in their life. So they wanted to break away from the set formulas that historical styles gave them. Historical st styles dictated that there needs to be a certain sense of proportion, there need to be a certain set of rules, and the windows had to be this tall if it is this wide, and there need to be repetition and color restriction. There were a lot of restrictions from the industrial set and there were a lot of restrictions from the historic styles. So these people did not want all these restrictions, so they found a third and a different approach that led to Art Nouveau. They wanted originality. They didn't just like to take some motive from the previous era and then do a makeover on that and then present it, like I mentioned earlier. They were in search of original ideas. So all these culminated in the birth of Art Nouveau in the early 1890s. The most important feature of Art Nouveau is they actually broke away from traditional historic architecture because until neoclassicism, they were following traditional architecture and they weren't having any new variety of idea. Until Art Nouveau came, all the ideas were mostly makeovers of the ideas which previously existed. So this represents the beginning of 
what we call the modernism in design, the modern architecture. This is railway station entrance in Austria. Again, take a look at the difference in the Art Nouveau, ex Art Nouveau style in different countries. Again, the picture on the right is again another form of Art Nouveau, but this style was later came to be known as the Glasgow School of Art. Uh, this was designed by another famous architect, Charles René Macintosh, and he was once a great pioneer of Art Nouveau, and later he formulated his own style of art. And on the left-hand side building is again another way in which you can express Art Nouveau in different. We're talking about Hector Guimard and his great entrance to the metro railway stations. And on the picture on your right is the famous entrance to railway stations. The text on top of it, even the wrought iron railings, everything was designed in Art Nouveau fashion. It gave a very unique appearance and this was replicated in almost all the railway stations and one of it even exists in Chicago Metro railway station. Again, take a look at human and animal forms and curves and railing design. So now it's time to understand what we learned in this episode. We try to understand the reasons for the birth of a new style, which is Art Nouveau. We try to understand the cultural scenario which led to the birth of Art Nouveau. We understood the various art forms in which Art Nouveau existed. We understood the fundamentals of Art Nouveau architecture and characteristics of Art Nouveau architecture. With this, we should be able to answer the following questions which are going to appear on your screen right now. Explain the need for a new style, Art Nouveau. Who were the key proponents of Art Nouveau? What was Art Nouveau called in various languages? And what were their expressions? Explain the different fields in which Art Nouveau was prospering in its heights. I look forward to meeting you on the other side of this lecture in the next episode with a few more examples of the same style. We'll be looking at architects who we mentioned earlier in this episode and we'll be working we'll be looking at their works in detail. Until then, thank you.